for sharing the live. guys doing today
So mad, so mad, so pissed off. Excuse me, Lord. check out my GoFundMe and my petition. That's all I gotta say is please check out my petition and my GoFundMe or my cash apps and stuff because I need a lawyer quick. But what I said's happening but not the way that they said it was gonna happen and not with my children being traumatized already. question what sense does it make that misdemeanors can be used against people but yet I would say 75 or 80 percent of the population has misdemeanors if you look in the paper each week how many misdemeanors do you see a bunch whether they're guilty or not so now they're holding misdemeanors against people that are perfectly healthy and happy and suitable to care for children and put them in people's homes that don't know them who only have a few visits to make sure they're they're suitable for care, to care for strangers' children, but yet there's such high expectations for kinmanship. The state is not out for your children's best interest. They are out to hurt them. Only 25 to 30 percent of calls actually needed children to be removed. The remainder of them are false calls that lead to removals that should never happen. So that your child is traumatized, and that they forever have that incident to have to heal over or try to. I ain't the one that's gonna stop fighting. I ain't the one that's gonna just lay down and be like, yep, you win, you hurt my children. No ma'am, no ham, no thank you. I don't care who you are, what title you wear. I promise you, I'm coming for y'all's jobs. What I, my, my child told me last night was enough. In a trusted home that you put them in when they've never had to deal with it before. They've never had to deal with what he dealt with last night. Really, really the less traumatic route, huh? But yet, the place they deserve to go, which they're going to be going, but the place that some of them deserve to go can't because of misdemeanors. Not by the person who owns the home, but somebody residing there. What? That person could leave, move out, whatever, if they don't own the home. That means that anybody who has a misdemeanor of a certain sort can't have their children. And you can't stay in a hotel for seven days because legally by law, the Tennessee Short-Term Act in 2021 passed that says that Tennessee is one of the most visited places for vacation that you can stay in a hotel to up to 180 days. But per Tennessee, to me, I can't stay in it longer than seven days. Also, you know, I didn't turn my grades in until end of June last year. Now the grades are supposed to be turned in now when school's not even over with. They didn't give me a chance to turn in grades. So my children deserve to go through this abuse they're going through because you don't, you didn't establish the laws beforehand. You didn't tell me because our text messages say what you told me. You never said the severity of that meeting. You never said that meeting needed to be had so that they didn't go into care. You never let on any wrongs in any com communication we had. And the children know that because they were here. 
I promise you, I'm coming for jobs. Because my children are gonna live with this forever and they're gonna be tainted forever and never, ever, ever feel like they, do you think my children's ever gonna feel safe again? No, they're gonna feel anxious about the fact that they're never safe. They're never safe from ex-family. They're never safe from haters. They're never safe from the judicial system. They're never safe from the state of Tennessee or any state we're in per se. And they have been hurt by their actions that was not needed. When they can finally speak like they're supposed to be able to the other day, they will say, you are tra who traumatized us. This action is what traumatized us. Not staying in a hotel. Not staying with our family. You know, if there was abuse but prior to this or they had been, you know, traumatized and needing counseling, sure. But they never needed counseling prior to this, but they're extremely pissed <clears throat> because the most healthiest for my children could be worked around and done. But no, let's just give them with somebody they don't even know. Like their first approved houses are people that don't know them. And people that abused them, that in the paperwork abused them. you call the damn DCS tell them how twisted they are their first options are people who allowed the children to be abused at their where they were in my care with no abuse and that was said in court in the end not after they were abused though read this okay this is my ex family okay the, the person that hasn't been around the children in seven years and let me read you why okay all righty on January the 23rd 2018 the department received a report regarding the abuse of three children the report alleged they were drug abused the children older half Crotts recently left the home of the father, Michael Crotts, due to use of to describe in exact detail the father's drug use, which included methamphetamine. Okay? It is reported that the children, Michael, Natalie, and Andy, has not been at the home of their father approximately two and a half weeks as there was no heat in the home and that some windows were broken out in the home. When in the father's care, the children reportedly go to school hungry and dirty, sometimes wearing the same clothes worn the previous day. Michael Crotts refused a drug screen but did admit that she used marijuana and suboxone. DCS asked the courts to order Michael Crotts to abide by the plan to allow no unsupervised visits contact between Michael and said children pending further. The mother resides at blank. The father resides at 385 Bill Welch Drive. This is my mother, my ex-mother-in-law's information that they went to choose my children for, five children for first. What does her address say? So this statement also should include her because she bought the lawyer to fight me. She bought the lawyer to get my children. They got them. I got joint. And then she allowed them to be abused, neglected in this home that she owned. Now let's go to the new paper. Let's go to the new paper, okay? All righty. <clears throat> 
guess what the father's address is? Because he can't be at his mother's because there's a hundred foot order in place. All right, uh, let, let me show you right quick. 185 Embassy Cove. What's the other address on here? Oh, Embassy Cove. But there's a hundred foot order in place where he's not allowed around the children. Now, if you think that she let these children be abused in her home after paying for a lawyer, she let these children be unsupervised by teenagers while she bar hopped, if you don't think that she won't have these children around him, you're crazy. So you go to that person for first option, you let my two younger babies play with that person at DCS office who has no relation to her whatsoever? And that's your first choice. Seeing that they went to school from her home abused and neglected. Then, we have two great families. We have two great families. When does it all change? If she would have came to me because last year we had a meeting, one day I'll, all, all this will be shown once we get these people in court, I promise. Maybe not the court hearings, but the hearings of the meetings because I legally can record those and you can record in court too because it's your right to in case you didn't know. They will say don't put these recordings online or whatever. Of course, common sense, I hadn't yet. You know why? Because they're going to my attorney. But just hear me out. You are right to record all that so that when you can, can prove that the laws weren't falling and you can finally get a lawyer, there isn't statutes to sue people on certain things. So my children are now going to be separated hours apart and a few of the people separated because of one person having a misdemeanor that has said they would move. They would move because these babies would be spoiled. They would be loved. They would never ask for anything. They would never be fearful. They would never worry about mom and dad. They would be happy, so happy. And if they would have come to me prior and said, look, I'm going to remove your children. We don't have this meeting. I would have had it. Life has been chaotic. No person that has lost their mother-in-law unexpectedly, been evicted, been searching for homes and staying in a hotel, would want to be able to go have a meeting. Plus, they knew I have five children. They knew that I couldn't fit all of them in the car to go have a meeting. Why didn't they offer to take us? Not one, one text message that offers to take us to have that meeting. So do they really try to prevent the removal of my children? The people who have seen these messages know they did not. This was all planned and ex executed properly by her higher ups. And I, I'm fed up. You know, I, I'm, I'm tired. The call last night for my child will eventually be shown in the courts. And I promise you, I'm coming for somebody's job. Because if they're being abused in other places that are supposed to be more protection for them, less traumatic, then you're not doing your job. I mean, what child calls you at 10 o'clock bawling to call DCS? Bawling to call whoever they got to call? because they need, to be, they need to be moved right then. Like, my children never called you bawling because they were being abused, physically or emotionally or mentally, verbally. I have it recorded. I have it recorded. My child screaming and crying, being physically, emotionally, and verbally abused. Great job. Great job, State of Tennessee, great job. That's all I got to say about it. Call those hotlines. Call those people I have posted and continue to do what we need to do to get these children back. No, I didn't say which child. Mm -mm. I didn't say which child. But people, me and a few others have seen the video and they all say these children have never went through nothing like that. You're where I ain't crying because I'm pissed. I am pissed off that my children are removed from a non-home that does not go through any abuse. We don't argue. We don't fight. They don't get spankings. They don't get hit on. They don't fight each other. And then to be lied on, hit, and harassed. And I can't do nothing to protect them. Because of other people on this app. I promise you, when I'm done, you ain't going to have nothing because you caused this and it's all publicly online, just like my stuff is. So is yours and you better remember that.
if you've been wrongfully done, please contact me. If you've been wrongfully convicted, wrongfully your children removed, please contact me. Because we have two or more people that can prove they've been wrongfully done this way by not just the DCS, but other people, the case will probably be free. So please, if you for sure, there's no I failed drug test, or you know, if you've had a lengthy like they allowed you to take drug drug test, you know, and and you passed them, or you've had something in your system that they allow, and they use that against you later, that's okay. But like, if you're a heavy drug user, like you know, heavy drugs, you're not going to be able to. So don't even try. But if your children were removed for like being in a hotel, if they were removed for staying with family that were properly to care for them, if they were, you know, any of those things, contact me, okay? All right. And you can say karma all you want, baby. Karma would be, if, if I had karma from anybody, it would be Kevin, okay? Okay? And just because I don't speak about things, I don't understand what you people can understand. Listen, you people must have zero respect for people that love you. Okay, because listen, I, I have been asked by certain families not to say certain things, post certain things, post them, and you don't see me doing that. I respect the people who love and respect me. And that concludes some things that may have happened or may not have happened. Just because you think that I'll do a certain thing doesn't make it true. It's called respect. Okay, it doesn't, nothing else. I hope you guys call everybody. I'll post the number. Terry Saunders is the person over the foster care who literally knows the two best options for my children. And then one can't, one even said, they, I'll move. I'll move so that he can get these children because it's best for them. They would be with family together. They'd be able to see each other all the time. They'd be able, probably going on vacation. Like this is the best alternative for them. And then now it's all just not happening. Like, one's happened, but the other isn't. So, a couple of the children's going to be hours away from their siblings. Not be able to just go to families and have a dinner on the weekends. Not be able to just drive up the road and see them for a little bit. No, they're still going to be traumatized. I'm visiting post numbers, and I want you to call them. Please call the governor's office. Tell them my children are being abused in foster care. They've never endured abuse. Just because somebody has TikTok doesn't mean it's abuse. Not the courts. Don't you think TikTok is causing this? No, the people on TikTok is causing this, not TikTok or me. Like, that's like me saying, uh, uh, oh, my, you had a car wreck. It's because you're a judge. No, it's because the other driver hit you. So guys, I'm, I have a lawyer that has told me he might take all the cases, all the cases I need. If you have it in your heart to donate a dollar, I hate to say this, but please do. Because I promise if I have $90,000 at this point, it would go to a house and a lawyer. Because I want to make change in this state. It isn't just my local judge. It's the whole state. Everything in foster care and DCS needs to be changed. It has been twisted since the 90s. How many children have been hurt, abused, and neglected in foster care? Like I told y'all. And my children ain't been in foster care five days. Five days. And they've already been abused. I'm pissed. Oh, I'm so pissed. Because if it was anybody else, they'd already had their teeth knocked out. If somebody else was abusing my children around me, they would be in jail and so would I. Or so would Kevin. Nobody is allowed to abuse our children. And now the people that abuse them, the ex-family, has caused them to be removed. My child got off the phone last night bawling. We told him, well, nothing we could, baby, nothing mama can do, daddy can do. Go talk to your, your foster parent. He never called back. After me recording someone else 
physically, emotionally, and verbally abusing him in the background, him bawling at 10 o'clock at night to want to come home and go somewhere else because he was being abused. He had been abused all day. All day. They're not answering the phone. And not by the foster parent, by another person. <clears throat> One of my children was in the background arguing with that person to stop it, to stop what he's doing to a sibling. <clears throat> Just listen, if this can happen to me, it can happen to you. And if it means that my TikTok could cause this, your job could cause this. Going to church could cause this. A family not liking you could cause this. A friend that turns a foe could cause this. A neighbor could cause this. Y'all should be worried. You should be worried. Okay? Be worried. Because now, my ch I tell you, my children come back. They're going to tell you the truth. I ain't, I ain't, I might even get on here, but I'm going to turn my phone on as soon as I see them and say, tell me what's happened. Tell me, have you been abused? Have you been traumatized? Were you traumatized when they come and took you, like prior to that? Were you traumatized when they took you? And let's see what they say, because they are, and they did this on purpose to hurt my children. It ain't about me. It's about hurting me. It ain't about the children. It's about hurting me. That's truly what it is. It's about hurting me. Like I told y'all, my children are being abused in foster care. Just like I told y'all happens. But yet, no. Tennessee, no, it doesn't. We take them out for the benefit of the child. Not to protect the child from neglectful abuse. Immediate danger. What danger were they in? Besides my ex-family's threats. They should be in jail. My children with me, not the other way around. Them out free, stalking me with a restraining order against me. My children gone, being abused. All right, here you go, since the judge didn't know what this was, and I didn't have time to print it out. The Tennessee Short-Term Rental Unit Act defines a short-term rental unit as a residential dwelling, whether a single-family dwelling or a unit in a multiple dwelling, such as an apartment building, condominium, a cooperative, or a that is rented out fully or partially for a fee for a period of less than 30 consecutive days. Go on down. Another important difference exists between Tennessee and California as the later ladder limits the maximum transient occupancy to 180 days. Okay? Exactly, Brittany. I promise you, I'm going for jobs. I'm going for change. I didn't go this far on my platform just to say, I give up, I'm closing my account down. Nope. I don't have 91,000 followers just to say, I give up. Nope. I'm not doing that. I ain't done nothing wrong. The only thing was not having a house and not turning their grades in yet, which isn't. And if that's the case, they should have been removed last April when they weren't enrolled in any school because I read the law wrong. So there's been so many things that's happened that they haven't followed policy and procedure. If my children were in immediate danger now in a hotel, they were in immediate danger last year when they hadn't been to the doctor, nor were they enrolled in school because I didn't realize they weren't enrolled because how the law read, which he dismissed the case. If that's the case, they should have been removed back two weeks ago, three weeks ago when we went to grandma's when we were homeless. That's why I asked you. No, you asked me where we were going. You didn't ask me where the kids could go if they needed to. All of it's in text message, and these children witnessed you do it all. They witnessed every interaction. They witnessed every cop report. They witnessed it all. And they are old enough, a few of them, to testify. And I promise you, we will be heard in the end. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care if they get with family and they're fine. They will be traumatized for the rest of their life over what time they spent in foster care. And these workers lying to them. Okay, so let's read this again. It says, my own county state don't know the laws. Another important difference exists between Tennessee and California. The latter limits the maximum transient occupancy calendar days per year for non-owner occupied between owner-occupied and non-owner-occupied vacation rentals, which makes this a viable investment strategy for in-state or out-of-state real estate investors. Okay, let me go to the next one so you can see that hotels are included in that.
All righty, here you go. It says, noteworthy, the Tennessee Short-Term Rental Unit asks local governing authorities from prohibiting the use of a property as a short-term rental and restricting or regulating a short-term rental unit based on classification, use, or occupancy. This is a major clause which sets Tennessee apart from many other U.S. states and which makes the local legislature conductive to the further growth and development of the vacation rental industry. Nevertheless, local governing bodies may enact local laws and limit or prohibit the use of a short-term rental when it comes to matters related to the public health and safety. This feature of the Tennessee short-term rental regulations assures that the interests and well-being of the general public are taken care of without compromising the rights of the Airbnb host and owners. Look, right here. The definition classifies short-term rentals as a type of hotel. It says Airbnbs, hotels, and other things are also that. Well, I've been paying for it, and we pay more here than we did at the damn the Dagum house. Our children were fed. Y'all saw us cooking for them. Our children were loved. Our children were happy. My children are crushed. The only thing Neelan would say was, yeah. And I couldn't see him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And trust in the background. Dada! I want my dada! Where's dada? Natty ain't yet got to speak to us. Uh, we've, I've talked to her through text, but that's it. And then the boys, they, they've been great. Thought we were wonderful. You know, it's someone else in that home that's abusing them. Neilan don't understand. He's so just hurt. He don't know where his siblings are. He don't know why they're not with him. Like, we ain't talked to him for five days because they wouldn't answer. And then Neelan just gets taken off. I'm trusting gets taken off because he's crying, wanting dad. While dad's crying too, we're both bawling. Now, is that really kids that were traumatized that did because we stayed in a hotel? They never stayed on the street. Not one day were they technically homeless. Because homeless in Tennessee is in your car or on the government street owned state property that makes it a federal offense to be homeless. We have never once been homeless one day this entire three, three weeks. I know y'all are watching Sadie Tennessee. I will leave. We will leave. You get my children back to me fast in a hurry to where they should be, and I'm, I'm leaving. It, I won't be in your county. I won't even probably be in your state, but I'm leaving. But I promise you this, I don't care how long it takes me. I'm 31. If it takes me till I'm 65 to get changes in this state and the people that are responsible for taking children wrongfully and putting people in prison wrongfully, I will do it. I promise you I'll do it. And if it takes my entire life's work to get it done, I'm not stopping until it does. Because I told y'all that 90, 75 to 80 percent of children are abused in foster care where they're supposed to be protected. More so than they are in their own homes that they were removed from. And that's why so many people are traumatized because the ones who are removed get a better life that needed it. And the ones that didn't need to be removed have trauma for forever. I'm tired of hearing about foster kids that were abused or neglected in foster care but not their home. And their family didn't have the money or the means or the time to fight it. But I don't have any kids right now and I have a platform and I plan to use it. I may not tell details about my family, but like I said, I'm fixing to advocate, 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 advocate against people who utilize their power for gain. Whether it's your child being a check or a gain as a power trip. That's what this is is a power trip. If my children deserve to be removed now, they deserve to be removed all other cases this past 14 months. Because I've had TikTok this whole time. If TikTok's the issue, they should have been removed in 2021 when the first TikTok call came in. Over a pew pew that I shared the video about because I thought I was trying to help and warn other people. 
which it was a warning video. It taught me a huge lesson. But they used it against me. They didn't remove my children. No. No. no not even with Kevin in the home. There's been so many things that have been broken and their own policy and procedures not followed. And just for anybody who says he's not, here is Trustin's name. Trustin Cheryl. This was the first paper. The, I ain't got the birth certificate yet. This has been changed that the one R not being in there has been corrected. I'm waiting for the birth certificate to come. This happened a while back. I lost the paper. That's why I don't have the birth certificate, but I have a copy of the birth certificate. So there you go, you hater baiters. He is a Cheryl. Stop saying he's not. you guys to see a few more things that I'm going to my battles and I'm going to go into my bows. All right, right here. You have the right. You, the First Amendment allows the media certain use of a person's name or likeness in reporting newsworthy events and in promoting the media itself. But up here, right to privacy, right of publicity. A violation of this right occurs when an individual's name, likeness, or identity has been misappropriated by another for commercial purposes. The victim is su in such a case is entitled to recover for the unauthorized economic gain by the tort for seer. So all my, you know, ex-people, all the bullies and haters who've been sitting online benefiting from my name, getting gifts, you owe me. You do. You owe me. Because you posted it's educational only. Okay, the ten oh, hey, listen. Miss Kathy, I don't care because they have to pay to come in. So if they pay to come in and they rude, they're going to get blocked. And then I still get paid anyway. So thank you for paying me $5. Thank you $9 for, for paying me whatever, which one you chose. Um, the Tennessee Laws, Laws and Regulation, Human Rights Commission. The Tennessee Human Rights Act and Tennessee Disability Act prohibits discrimination related to employment, housing, or public accommodation. Let's read that again. This is from Tennessee Law. This is a Tennessee.gov website. The Tennessee Human Rights Act and Tennessee Disability Act prohibits discrimination related to employment. Can't get a job right now because my TikTok. They don't want to hire me because the haters. Uh, housing. Uh, I was discriminated against my TikTok all last year. You can hear and read the comments. You just your TikTok post, your TikTok from the last rent landlords, which we got evicted for, and then public accommodations like. Okay, let's go back over this. When a child enters custody, if the child, th these are the reasons why, the child is found to be neglected or abused. How is staying in a hotel for seven days abuse or neglect? How is not turning in their homework that's not, their schoolwork that's not due till June, ne abuse or neglect? You asked me for a calendar. I filled it out by the days I thought we would go by. With homeschool, that can change. You know, just because you end the beginning of May doesn't mean we'd have to. We could have postponed those 10 days till the beginning of June if I wanted to. You didn't ask me or tell me that you needed stuff like that. You said you needed a calendar and I gave it to you. If a juvenile is found to be delinquent, also referred to as juvenile justice child who has been found by the court to have committed an offense which would be considered a crime if it had been committed by an adult, has he done, any of my children done that? No, they're wonderful. The child is unruly. They might come back unruly because y'all caused them trauma they never had endured. <clears throat> none of this, none of this rights and responsible. You have the right to refuse services. Clearly not. You have the right for treatment in accordance with the state and federal laws. Appeal adverse actions, delays, denials, reductions, suspensions, or terminations of ten care services. Review upon request your own records. Make sure that you, you petition the courts for discovery of your unredacted file. 
Informing regarding clients' rights, including a copy of this document and or explanation rights and language. Your responsibility. I've done all my responsibilities. Guess how many homeless people are in America? Yes, over a half a million people. So you're going to take every child from those homeless and put them in foster care? Okay, yeah, I'm glad you know that. Okay, uh, stalking. Two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district in the free exercise to, to the enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the Constitution or laws of the United States. When the judge is doing DCS cases, he's under contract law, not, not our constitutional law. You, need, you guys need to learn that. You guys need to learn that. Either way, it's against the law. He takes an oath to uphold the Constitution, which means he will not put anybody or take anybody away from somebody for monetary gain. Yet, contract law, he's paid to do that. So either way, it's against the law, and he's committing fraud. You, you guys need to look up how our laws really work, what we're really under, and how they really do fool us for so long. And until people wake up, there's not going to be changes. There's still going to be children abused and traumatized over people that have power and abuse it. Alright, let's go over this right quick. This is their own policies. I read this the other day to you. Explores all home-based services they ain't once sent me a rental. They ain't once tried to get me to that meeting. <clears throat> and options in the effort to alleviate immediate safety issues and address the underlying needs of a child youth before removal. Um, you knew I had a four-seater car. You knew I had five children. You knew Kevin was at work. You never once offered to give me a ride to the office to have a meeting with all the children. You said, will you come in with a meeting with the children? We had just lost our grandmother. We were grieving. We were having to plan a funeral, plus pack. If that was the case, why wasn't my children removed then? If a meeting was so needed and they were in such risk, why wasn't a meeting planned? Because the last meeting they had, me and Kevin both was there at five o'clock. We have the whole meeting, hour long meeting recorded. Uh, it's gone down. Reasonable efforts never take precedence above the immediate safety of the child youth. Look, if the parent care caregiver is involved to the greatest extent possible, which we have, you guys have seen it. We've opened the door each time. We took drug tests each time. We've been to court every month last year. We spent $25,000 almost keeping us out of all the crap they caused, trying to take our children then, and it didn't work. So that the parent, um, the case manager assesses the immediate safety of the child and uses the family advocate tool. The parent caregiver is involved to the greatest extent possible in the decision regarding the reasonable efforts. No, they didn't. They showed up a week later after approving us to stay in the hotel for a month and then removed my children. In intervention or direct services by DCS and IPA, use of family, neighbors, or other individuals in the community as a safety placement or resource. And why did they go? Why did they go to foster care? If you had two homes approved that night, why were they ever put in foster care? Why? To traumatize my children. Holding a child and family team meeting. Okay, well if you received, can we have a CFTM meeting? Would you know what that meant? Would you know what CFTM meant if they only said, um, Amy, can we have a, can we have a CTFM meeting? Or can we have a meeting? And you had a loss, you're moving, and you're in shambles. And you say, not at this moment, but let us get settled. Let us get moved and settled because this is traumatizing to the children. You're here every day. That's what my messages say. My messages say, let it be when we get settled. Not no. Not no. I never said no. Arranging for services to increase risk or safety. All right, let's go down here to this. The reasons why they remove them, okay? Exists for an emergency custodial removal to take place. The following circumstances may lead to an emergency custody removal. Exigent reasons. Exist when, based on the totality of the circumstances, there is reasonable cause to believe that the child youth is in Im imminent danger or serious bodily injury. My child in danger right now was getting bodily injured by his foster home. Not my home. 
They don't even get spanked. Five days and he's already being abused. While well, they get paid a check to let it happen. Not on my watch. I don't care if it takes me, like I said, 30 years. I'm not going to let this go ever. And if you gave me a reason to fight for stuff, it's this. It is this. I ain't been in domestic violence for a while now. But I will advocate for domestic violence families because I've endured it myself. But right now, on my heart, what's important is changing the laws in our states and our government because they are wrong. And if you look up our rights as citizens, they have violated us in more ways than we realize. Like I said, if this can happen to me, don't come to Tennessee. Do not come to Tennessee and vacation more than seven days because your children can be removed because you've come to vacation for seven days or longer in Tennessee, which clearly told you, I stated and showed you, you have 180 days to stay in a hotel in Tennessee. Hotel, B&B, whatever. and that custodial removal is reasonably necessary to avert that specific injury. What injury was my children? They weren't worried about injuries. They were worried about getting up, watching TV, doing a little bit of work, talking to each other, going outside until we got moved to our forever home. Like these people act like I ain't been trying to get a rental. When I clearly showed you that our own Tennessee right says that I cannot be discriminated against for public housing, for jobs, or for rentals, but I have been. I have been. I have been very discriminated against because of all the people harassing me, doxing my address, calling the landlords, calling the cops. People don't want their name on the scanner every day because no matter if they call on me or not, it's their address that's going to be called on the scanner. But no, it's just blame her, blame her, blame her. You're the cause. You're the cause. Well, then you're in DCS. Let me just come take your children and say, well, you're a DCS worker. That's why. Like, it, I have a right to work. Yes, my, one of my children has been abused. Imminent danger means there is an imminent threat to the child's youth health or safety and there is reasonable cause to believe that the child youth is likely to experience ser specific, serious, or irreplaceable physical harm in the time that it would be required to obtain and enforce a court order. Do you guys really think my children were an imminent threat that would be experiencing specific, serious, or irreplaceable physical harm? They're experiencing it now. They're experiencing it now. My child was in shambles. He wanted to leave the home last night in the dark by himself. And his dad over in the corner crying. Because nothing he could do. We spent eight years protecting them. Eight years. Eight years of not having people around. Eight years of not going around people. Eight years of... Why? Eight years for what? Specific threat of harm. There is a particular injury or condition endangering the child youth. The DCS case manager is able to articulate the specific danger and general concerns about a child youth. Well, the concerns was Natty burned her finger cooking un un unsupervised. I was around the corner. She told me she's going to cook some eggs and bacon. She's 12. So preteens aren't supposed to start learning how to cook. The burn literally didn't even blister up. It was this big, and she came and saw it that day and approved it. Then, a cut on Neyland's foot. Read this and tell me, is this a cut? Tell me if this is a cut. All right, and read my message too. February 21st, before you get called, Trustin broke a small candle. They were not on camera, the kids were on camera, and that Natty's tooth was swollen, and I laughed. I smirked at Natty because I said, take a Tylenol, sis, and she said, I don't want to. And I said, well, nothing about it. Nothing I can do but just take Tylenol for now. I got her into the dentist. The dentist said, y'all saw the video where he says it's a molar. Take Tylenol over propren. It's normal. She had no cavities. She lied on the stand. Okay, now you tell me, do you see a cut? Before you get called, I immediately texted her. Trust and broke a small candle and kids didn't clean up. So I had to, after Neyland said he said there's nothing in it and no blood. Look. Is that a cut?
I'm not, I'm not saying names, but you can correlate who I'm talking about by what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, but it'll all come out. Y'all should know who I'm talking about. The person that promised us she was doing everything to keep our kids with us. No reason to remove them. We were her favorite people. She calls Kevin Mr. Kevin. If you think somebody's an abuser, why, why would you call her Kevin? Yeah, that was in the paperwork. Even though she came to the house, there was no cut. She said it wasn't a cut. And I sent her that picture as soon as it happened. They told me, do, do any of you guys remember last year what they told me? Do any of you guys remember why I moved to the bedroom? To do my craft. I moved to the bedroom to do crafts. Please. No, that the children are unsupervised and the older children are raising them. So turning on TV, making a snack or pouring a drink while I'm feet away is raising them. But when asked, um, in, in raising, do you mean getting snacks and helping them? Or do you mean changing diapers and giving baths? They said getting snacks and helping them. That's normal for preteens. That's why our children are such great children because they are taught right. How to act, behave, be, how to treat people. They are, they are taught to mature and not be little bitty invalids at 12 and 13. They're not babies. So if my children would have went like all the other foster children and not know a single thing, that would be best. But yet, we've been getting compliments and from our children that our children know how to fold clothes better than any child ever been there. My children know how to fold clothes and clean better than the own foster parent. That that was the best kid she'd had in 30 years. I know, and I want y'all to know that I'm not ever going to stop fighting. They want me to just stop my TikTok. But look, you tell me how if Kevin makes six to six hundred to a thousand dollars a week, how he would pay for the hotel, save for a house, save for a car, and us get a lawyer to stop all this and get the people on the stand. On the stand, prosecutor. Just stop TikTok. Just get a job. Just, oh, make $300 a week and the hotel's $545. It would take me all month to pay for the two weeks. Take me two weeks to pay for this hotel. And just go get a job, which takes two weeks to get started on. And just stop. Why would I do that when I've owned my business for five years? Like, I own my business. It's mine. I put five years into it. It's like me telling you, you go to, you go to get your, your tennis, you go to get your... Go get your state, you know, state patrol. Um, Junior wants to be a game warden. It takes four to five years. You go to get your, I don't like you being a game warden. And, mm. But in the loan at $600, let's say you make $600 a week. That's the hotel cost. There wouldn't be no money for food. There wouldn't be no money for necessities. There wouldn't be no money for saving. And I told y'all his check just came normal because of his mom dying and because of Easter. So I'm supposed to just stop what I make money on because other people don't like me doing it. If that applies to me, that applies to everybody. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not playing their games. I, I'll totally agree with them. But they're going to hear me Monday. I promise you that. I'm pissing to, I'm to lay at all the laws because I'm telling you, I am going for jobs because my child has admitted to me. I have evidence and proof that he has been abused when he never was abused prior to being removed. It is least traumatic possible. It's supposed to be the least. That's supposed to be the escape from what they're enduring at home. Not escape from their home and happiness and be abused. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be they escape from the abuse to be in better homes. Not the other way around. So, yeah, I, I'm agreeing with them for now, and we're talking it out. But if my lawyer can come through, the one I'm interested in before a certain date, I'm most definitely bringing him to court. That's why I said, if you got a dollar in your heart to donate, $91,000 to pay for any of I have any house on the market I want today. And that would be very, that, there's no other thing to be held against me. I have a home, and I have a lawyer that put all this in place. So, if you feel like this is wrong and that anybody who comes to Tennessee could have their children removed after seven days of being in a hotel, 
or have have be persecuted because of the choice of job or line of work they choose to do because i receive a 1099 off this but i also receive from my business like i use this for my business can be persecuted and and, and their children removed you should be worried Okay, but they can all year long try to take your children with no grounds to remove them and they just pop up and remove them, you should be worried. If your children never endure abuse and somebody calls on you, you would understand. Like, my, I, none of y'all really said it, but I was told last year to not have the children involved in the live as much and maybe it would stop all the haters. Guess what I did? I moved from the kitchen to the entry hall. Then it was too too loud and the kids were always right there so I moved to my bedroom I never closed my door unless Kevin was home they always were feet away from me now the house they're in one of the kids the house they're in is huge you wouldn't know if one of them was hurting the other person that's how big it is but yet I'm my children in a thousand square, square foot home, but they're being abused in a 3,000 square foot home. Money and status doesn't make you a good person. If you can't control the other children you have in the home with you, then maybe you shouldn't be a foster parent. Because to have children who's never been truly abused or neglected, then be abused and neglected in your home, like you're saying these children are the best, but my child was called me all day saying that he was in an argument with another boy because he was lying on him. Lying on him. Continued to lie on him. And my child was in shambles because he was being verbally assaulted. And then last night when he calls us, he is bawling, wanting to leave and call the DCS worker right now because I'm being physically and verbally assaulted. While the boy in the background on my recording is cussing him out and he's 14. The boy is 14 and my child is not. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I stopped cooking. Yeah. Now y'all see why, that's why I stopped cooking. I told them I was making money cooking and cleaning. I was cleaning and cooking and y'all told me not to. So I have all that. I have all that saved. They are the reason I went to the bedroom and then said I was, wasn't supervising the kids because I was online four to ten hours a day. I would be at work four to ten hours a day not supervising them. You witches go after your baby's born to take other people's children. You don't even you don't even make a bond with your baby. I mean, it's craziness. And you would come in and take other children when you didn't even bond with your own child. You're gone more hours a day than I am mine. I'm telling you, I, there's I'm not giving up ever. But I gotta spend every penny I ever save after. I promise you, I'll, I'm. They better hope they change jobs because if I can hire a lawyer that will truly put them in their place, I'm fixing to. If I gotta spend all my savings, all my income. I promise you, my children, I did not stay with Kevin during some of our hardest times for my children then to be removed for no reason and be abused and neglected. Nope, I didn't do it. Nope, I didn't do it. I didn't leave my ex-husband in the middle of the night after him forcing you know what on me twice and about killing me for no reason. I didn't go to court and, and, and fight his family. A hundred foot order be kept in place for my kids then to go to their home where they were abused at. Nope, didn't do it. I ain't since kept my children safe for seven years from those people. You know, she's kept me from the children, the grandmother. No, ma'am. There is no, there's no grandparents' rights in Tennessee, and you allowed your son to abuse those children. They did not want to be around you because you paid the lawyer to take them from me, where they then was abused when I didn't abuse them, nor did Kevin. And they didn't want to be around you. But here's the thing. You're the grandparent. Everybody knows my number. Everybody knew my name. I was only 15 miles from you at any given point, and you never once tried to contact me or call me. So it ain't my responsibility to make sure you sure you're involved with my children's lives who you claim as your grandchildren. It's yours. And you just suddenly show up with the damn DCS as soon as they're up there and you want them, even my other two. Don't you think you should have called me first and be like, hey, 
Um, I know I haven't been around, and, you know, we ain't had the best, of, but can I go up there, or can I be around the two babies so that they can stay around their siblings together? No! They had the person that helped or allowed the abuse to happen seven years ago with my children when they were not abused with me and Kevin to go up there and sit with my children that night. Who they don't feel comfortable around and they hadn't seen but one time in seven years. Now, if your son lost his rights after you paying five to ten thousand dollars to the best lawyer in town, wouldn't you think you still won't see your your grandchildren? No, at the time it wasn't. She was bar hopping. It was only to get back at me. I'm 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 telling all this because that should not have been the first option for those children when your address and his address was the same. And his address is next door neighbors, and there's a hundred foot order in place. So my children's well beings better be the first thing that these people think about because if they don't and they do what they what they had claimed prior, we're we're gonna have issues. I mean, we're already having issues. I'm not. I'm telling you, I'm not stopping. I don't care if I don't gotta sleep every night. I don't care what I gotta do. I promise you, every penny I have after a house is going to a lawyer. I'm very upset. I'm very, very, very upset. Upset at the fact that they knew my children didn't need to be removed. They did it because of someone higher up. Just like the daggum, the daggum. It's just crazy. It's just, it's, it's, I'm never, oh, I'm going to change. It's hot. Feels good out here today. Be working on bows when I come back. Maybe posting some stuff to my website. I need to get my website up and going. I've got two orders I didn't even know I had. I've almost got those finished. So I'm going to be making some bows and stuff as soon as I can. Um, but you guys just pray for me, okay? That's, that's all I can really ask is pray for me. Um, if you can't donate a dollar, then come in this live and share it. You don't have to do anything that costs you money. Um, you can simply go over to my petition. You can sign the petition. Um, the more numbers, the better. As soon as I can get a lawyer, that will probably show, you know, it'll bigger numbers on that petition will show that I have people behind me, not just family. It will show that the people that have actually watched me on this, on this live and these, these accounts can say that they have never seen us, you know, abuse. You can leave a comment if you choose to. You don't have to. You can use a fake name. You don't have to use your real name. You can use a fake email address if you don't want to use your real email address. And if you want to leave a comment without being known who you are, I advise you to use your name and use a different email address. But I'm just, uh um, just like them. Have you have you told uh, this person's uh, address? Uh, well, if if I knew her address, that would be conflict of interest because she's the worker. When I say that we're all public knowledge, I mean that every single one of us who has a social security number, a birthday, and a tag plate is public knowledge. Besides judges, because their information is protected. I get the belt changed. But I'll be back, guys. Sign the petition. Donate. All the stuff is being saved because right now we're not going to the children. So the, the food expenses have really went down. But um, I don't care what I got to do. Um, I'm not giving up. And my whole days are going to be focused on getting my website seen, getting my other platforms growing, and not about the case. But I am going to advocate for family. So if you know of anybody who has been wrongfully removed, like that family in Tennessee that got pulled over and their children was removed, one of them, contact me because, or, or go to my website, my email address that I have posted in a video and send me your evidence or just send me your name and I'll, I'll email you back, okay? I'll be back, guys. I appreciate y'all. And just pray, okay? Pray for us. Sign the petition. Share the petition.